What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. And if this is your first time here, my name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. So subscribe for all kinds of content just like this if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So this is going to be another video in my R tutorial series, and for those of you who've been watching some of the earlier ones, you know that I've been working through a variety of packages from the tidyverse and this is going to be another one of those videos so today we're going to tackle the string r package which is going to be a package for attacking all of your character and string and regular expression needs so in this tutorial we're going to walk through how you work with character vectors and strings we're going to talk about subsetting and replacing components of strings and we're going to talk all about regular expressions now just a few notes before we get started. First of all, please take half a second of your time to smash the like button, because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, if you guys would be willing to support me over on Patreon, I will have a link to that in the description of this video, and it would mean the world to me. As always, with these scripts, they're going to be available on, on my GitHub repo, also in this video's description. Now keep in mind, as is the case with a number of my R tutorials, they are somewhat adapted from, or at the very least, uh, quite heavily influenced by the book R for Data Science by Hadley Wickham and Garrett Grolemund. I do highly recommend uh, checking that book out. There will be a link provided for that book. Now, like any other Tidyverse uh, package, I highly recommend getting acquainted with the cheat sheet that's going to be linked. And then I'll also provide a link to an uh, awesome tutorial for String R, which is available on the Tidyverse website. So now, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so by default in R, if you're creating some object and you put double quotes or single quotes on the outside, R is going to default to creating a character string. Now in this tutorial, keep in mind, I'm going to use these terms character or string or sometimes even character string fairly interchangeably, but just keep in mind I'm referring to the exact same thing. Now, if you want to create a string, but you want to have a quote on the inside, that's the one instance in which you want to be careful and use double quotes on the outside and a single quote when you're referencing that quote on the inside. So let's see some examples of this. I'm going to run this chunk of code, and then I'm, I'm going to have string 1, which is just, this is a string, no problem there. String two has double quotes on the outside and then a single quote for this quote that's on the inside. And if I just expand this, that looks just fine when it comes back here. But when I did the single quotes on the outside and the double quotes on the inside, it comes back looking a little weird. See, we've got these backslashes going on on the outside. You probably don't want that. So just be careful when you uh, set these up if you plan to output these. Now, if you concatenate these different uh, elements, you're going to create what's known as a character vector. So, for instance, I want to create a vector called numbers. I'm going to concatenate these elements 1, 2, and 3. Now, let me just bring this back out here. I have a character vector. If we run the structure of that, it's a character vector of size 3. The elements are 1, 2, and 3. They're all individual character strings concatenated into a character vector. Now, rather than having these separate elements, say 1, 2, and 3, we may want to merge these different text elements into one single one. So that's where either the paste or str underscore c functions are going to come in handy. Now, paste is a function from base r, and str underscore c comes from string r. They do the exact same thing, but I do just recommend getting used to str underscore c just to get used to the string r family of functions that all begin with this prefix str. So the str underscore c function, or paste, they're going to have the different arguments sep or collapse, sep standing for uh, separator. And the difference between these is they're both going to separate these elements by whatever you choose. The difference is whether we want this separator to be between the elements or within the elements. 
So let's see an example. Now, I've created these two uh, vectors, Shameless Plugs 1 and Shameless Plugs 2. Subscribe to Richard on Data and smash the like button. Check out the other R tutorials and Julia tutorials as well. Yes, I'm terrible. You don't need to tell me in the comments section. So let's see what happens when we bring Shameless Plugs 1 and Shameless Plugs 2 together using this uh, argument sep equals uh, comma followed by a space. It's going to do pairwise, subscribe to Richard on data, comma, and smash the like button, bring that into one vector, and then next, the next pairwise combination, check out the other R2 R tutorials, comma, space, and Julia tutorials as well. So we took this, comma, this, then this, comma, this, separated them into two vectors. Now let's compare what happens with collapse. We run that, and we've got subscribe to Richard on data and smash the like button. No separation between them whatsoever. But we took the comma and the space thereafter to come uh, between these two things which are all coming together. So naturally, we want the best of both worlds. We want a sep just to be a uh, space here, and then the collapse to be comma followed by space, and we've got subscribe to Richard on data and smash the like button, comma, space, check out the other R tutorials and Julia tutorials as well. Now I gotta be honest, sometimes I have a challenging time just remembering the difference between the two off the top of my head. It's nothing though that some uh, good old trial and error won't uh, help you get through. Lastly, maybe you want to return the uh, length of your string. That's a common operator that happens and gets passed to a function where you're doing something more complex. So we're going to return the length of shameless plugs 1. Let's do that, and we've got 26 and 31 for uh, subscribe to Richard on Data and check out the other R tutorials, respectively. So, not much to that. Next thing we're going to cover is subsetting and replacing strings, and that's where uh, the str underscore sub function is going to be really helpful. So I'm going to create a new uh, string here, just call it shameless plug, that's subscribe to Richard on data. And now we can do this either forwards or backwards. So if I do str underscore sub for shameless plug, I've got one and nine. Well, these two arguments will tell us just where to select from. One to nine will just give us the first through ninth characters. That's just subscribe here, because it's a nine letter word. But then if I put negative numbers here, I'm gonna work backwards. So I'm gonna start at the 13th to last character and go to the uh, last character, and I just get Richard on data. So very, very useful operator here. You may be interested in changing the cases of your strings, that is going from uppercase to lowercase or vice versa. And luckily we have functions for that. We've got str to upper and str to lower. So let's just see an example. If we run the str to upper function on shameless plug, we have the super enthusiastic looking subscribe to Richard on data. Well, this can be used as an intermediary as well. Let's see an example of that and you'll see what I mean by this. So let's suppose the very first letter of shameless plug. So that is this S here. I can use str underscore sub to take the first letter there, just go one to one, that just gives us the first letter. And now we're going to assign that to the function str to lower on the outside of str underscore sub shameless plug one one. We do that, and look at that. We've successfully changed that very first letter from a capital S to a lowercase s. Awesome. Now, last thing I want to show you is the str replace function. That's a much uh, more general way of going about doing things like that. We're just going to find a pattern and create a replacement for it. So, I'm going to create this obvious statement here. I like pi. And then under str replace, we've got two arguments, pattern and replacement. We want to replace as our pattern like with the replacement love. We do that and bam, we're going to return I love pi. That's simple enough, right? That shouldn't be any problem. Next up, let's talk about regular expressions. 
But before we even get into that, Stringr gives us a helper function, str underscore sort, just for arranging in alphabetical order a string. So I'm going to create a string with even more shameless plugs, like subscribe and comment. Notice that that is out of alphabetical order, but I'm just going to run uh, str underscore sort. And then we go C is before L, which is before S. It's in alphabetical order. Now, the str underscore view function, which is up next here, is going to provide us uh, a view based on some match that we want to create. So, let's say that we just feed to it um, the even more shameless plugs string here uh, with an s uh, in quotations. So, this is case sensitive, and notice this view that comes back to us is going to highlight this s over here. Okay, but we can get we can get a little bit more complex with that. So let's suppose we want a match to the characters which surround this thing that we're feeding it. So this is easiest to see with an example. So we've got this dot e thing. So in the first uh, element here, it's going to give us back the k e highlighted. So the e and then the character before it. Next up, subscribe, there's a B before the E, the BE gets highlighted, and then the ME for the M before the E gets highlighted. I did a dot, 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 E next, so we're going to get the three characters before this E, three characters before this E, three characters before this E, and then the dot, E dot, that's just going to give us back uh, the MEN around uh, comment here. So that's just for generating views. However, if you use the str underscore uh, detect function, you can return a Boolean, so true or false, for whether uh, whatever pattern that you feed it is going to come back. So for even more shameless plugs, if we uh, pass the C as an argument to it here, it comes back false, true, false. If we look over here at what we had for even more shameless plugs, there's no C here. There is a C here, that's why that came back true. Again, it's case sensitive, so comment is going to return uh, false for this match of a C. However, as I'm sure you already know by now, we can do much, much more than just looking for whether uh, some letter exists or not. So the first thing I'm going to show you are anchors, that is the first or last characters. Now, these are denoted by uh, this caret sign for the first character and a dollar sign at the end for the last character respectively. So what does that mean exactly? So in this context here where I passed caret s, that's going to return a true if that string begins with an uppercase s. Similarly, uh, this this uh, function at the end here where we've got the e dollar sign is going to be true if the string ends with an e lowercase e that is, false otherwise. Let's run that, and we've got false, true, false. We got the true in the case of the uh, subscribe, and for the e dollar sign, we got true and true for uh, like and subscribe, respectively. Now we've also got this str uh, count function that's gonna help us count occurrences of uh, characters. So if we wanna count the number of m's, for instance, uh, the comment word has two M's in it, so that's why uh, two comes back. Obviously, you can use this with a variety of other patterns. So, those of you familiar with regular expressions are already familiar with uh, this kind of logic, but, for instance, if we have uh, back, backslash uh, D, we can match to digits. If we have backslash S, we can match to white spaces. If we have in brackets A, B, C, we can match to A, B, or C. Now, if we had the caret on the inside of the brackets, that's like an inverse operator. That is, it's going to match to anything except A, B, or C. Now, that's different from the anchor operator, which is on the outside of brackets. But then if we have brackets A, uh, vertical line B, that's going to match to A or B. So, obviously, let's look at some examples of this. So in string R, there's this built-in vector called words. It's just a bunch of, to my knowledge, fairly random words. And we're going to create a tibble just called df. 
and we're going to create a new uh, vector in it, which is just called word. Now, let's see a few examples with regular expression matches. I'm going to pull up the uh, result here and just uh, talk through what exactly is going on here. So, in each of these words, I want to return the number of vowels, the number of consonants, and the number of times that we have the letter A or C. Now, for vowels, I can just do this by using the str count function, and it's the it's basically just the number of times in that word that we have an instance of A, E, I, O, or U. So, let's just see. We got an A, there's one vowel, it's the letter A. In able, we have A or E, that gives us a count of two, etc., etc. For consonants, that's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is put that uh, caret sign at the beginning of the brackets here. So we want the count of the letters that are not A, E, I, O, or U. Now, this is pretty easy to uh, verify. This gave us what we want. In able, we have B or L, that's two. About gives us uh, the B and the T, that's two consonants. And then if we just want the number of A or C, we can just do str count uh, for our word A, um, or uh, vertical line C, and we've got A has one A or C, Abel has one A or C. I think you guys get the idea. So just for some more examples, again, keep in mind, uh, if we have the caret on uh, outside of a bracket, that's used as an anchor. So I'm going to use it here in, a, uh, in an example of returning the words that start with Y. So we've got year, yes, yesterday. Only six of these words. So alternatively, though, let's use uh, the, the caret on the outside of the brackets and no caret on the, uh, on the inside. What that's going to have the effect of doing is returning words that start with vowels. So we've got a bunch of words that start with A. That's the first letter of the alphabet. But if we skip to the end here, we see that we've got words that end with the letter U. So you can trust me that this one works. And now let's suppose, though, we want to return words that do not contain vowels. What we could do here is just, and there's there's a number of ways that you could go about doing it, but this should be fairly intuitive. We can put a uh, exclamation point just to have an inverse operator for str uh, detect in the word uh, a, e, i, o, or u, and look at that. There are no vowels in this in uh, in any of these words. So these are just some examples. Obviously, regular expressions, text mining, all this kind of stuff is a huge field. And hopefully, you get the idea with string R that the possibilities truly are endless, and it's an, and it's an incredibly powerful tool that's really, really going to help you out for anything pertaining to uh, texts and uh, character strings. Now that covers what I'm going to walk through here in this tutorial. Like I say in all of my tutorials for these Tidyverse packages, this is not a comprehensive tutorial. There are tons of different uh, string R functions. And as usual, just get used to, in your console here, if you type question mark str underscore, you're going to get a list of all these different functions. You can look up the help documentation for them, just see how they work, look at the different arg arguments for them, and just get familiar with some of the other functions that are out there. But I think for a lot of people, this should cover some of the core essentials. At least it covers the functions I use the most from day to day whenever I work with strings. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it. And then as usual, smash the like button. And I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.